Welcome to the Hamwood Solar Project. Uh, we've been adding more and more batteries and getting more experience about getting batteries in use. And here uh, we've got our um, first bank of batteries. And uh, last night we took the batteries, uh, we took more energy out of the batteries than, uh, than we put in. And so they went down to 24 and a half volts. Within a fairly short space of time, they came back up to 25 volts, and uh, this suggests that uh, some batteries have been discharged rather more than others, and were then being recharged from batteries which hadn't been so discharged. This means that my efforts to keep cable lengths the same, so the distance between the cable length, for instance, between our junctions here and any one of these batteries um, is the same. So there's a lot of slack on a lot of cables because um, uh, all of these are the same. However, my efforts to do that clearly haven't been as effective as they might be. Um, incidentally, on battery monitoring voltage, um, the uh, digital meters um, that are in red are very, very good. I bought those from China. The round uh, battery uh, monitors um, are not uh, properly made, uh, they might possibly work with car batteries, which might possibly be working at a lower voltage than uh, valve-regulated lead-acid batteries. Um, so uh, that round meter with an indicator of battery charge isn't terribly good. Whilst we're on the subject of battery uh, charge, um, these controllers uh, solar controllers are particularly good and you can plug in with them you can see that wire there a meter and uh, that meter tells you a bit about what's going on in the battery but here you can see that that says that the battery is at the moment of 49 percent that seems to be quite an accurate um, indicator of battery charge so um, here we've got a new set of batteries which I've been commissioning and um, the main system um, in use is at 24 volts, so that we've got sets of batteries connected together in series. And th those of you who have watched my previous video will know that I'm using solder wire between the batteries as a fuse, so that no battery, no pair of batteries can give more than 7 amps. Now, temporarily, I've got these uh, brown and blue mains wires um, setting up each set of batteries which will be 24 volts um, uh, wired in as 12 volts so that I can uh, put desulfators on them and charge them all to the same amount so that uh, we know that, so, so that, uh, that they all work equally um, to avoid the sort of problems of that battery, the, the battery bank last night, which went to 24 and a half and then went up to 25 volts. Um, and in order to uh, achieve uh, space saving um, uh, so, or the maximum use of space, I doubled up on a couple of these batteries. These ones happened to be rather older, and in fact, these batteries uh, I discovered have been uh, uh, have a lower settling voltage, and so these are actually pulling the whole battery bank down, and so those have got to be changed. Um, I originally started uh, playing with some car batteries, which I thought were cheap. And so I've got a load of car batteries here which are a pain because I've got to keep them charged because otherwise they sulfate up when not in use. Here we've got the uh, inverters that I use. Um, we've got here uh, two 600 watt inverters which take um, uh, five or six hours of energy from the batteries every night. Um, these are uh, 14 to 28 volt uh, inverters which take the battery with the voltage quite well as between 24 and 28 volts um, and they give out about 400 watts each so the two give 800 watts and every night I come in here and uh, write down um, how much energy is being produced the solar panels are split between charging the batteries through these chargers 
um, and that solar AC charger is very good. It takes max. It gives. A, it's able to carry a maximum of 80 amps, and when uh, that has charged, um, it's uh, the voltage goes up. And then these two in volts at versus they're 1200 watt units. Those are really rather peak. So as uh, allow for 900 watts each, and then they get quite hot. So really allow for 600 watts each. Um, so between them, uh, we've got the capability of taking uh, about about 1200 watts of the power rejected by the battery system and putting it into the main, so that's quite efficient. And here we've got a, um, a, a power one inverter, and I'm sorry, the camera won't probably focus quite close enough here. Oh, there, there we go. Um, and uh, this shows uh, the amount of energy that we get every day. The graph is quite interesting. Our panels are facing east. So in the summer now, we get quite a sharp switch on <laughs> from 6 o'clock in the morning onwards, and it tails off at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but at the top here, the inverter tells us how much energy the six panels have produced. We've got 12 panels going into the um, battery system, of which, which is divided between the batteries and the inverters. And so, uh, because it's about 50%, that uh, energy monitoring tells us, tells me week by week how much energy I can set the time switches to take from the batteries. Um, uh, lights, um, these lights have been very successful. Some of these are corn cob LED bulbs, but others are made up of um, uh, these discs, they're great. Um, they are small LED discs, uh, they're 12 volts each, and one can simply wire a couple um, um, like that, so that you've got um, uh, a, a central pin into a strip connector, and the two pins on either side will put these in series to do 24 volts. And above the workbench, for instance, um, that LED light is actually rather effective. Um, and so I, I've been using more of these rather than the corn cob uh, lights. Um, and there's that rather effective light producing light on the bench here. Now, around the corner, um, we're still commissioning batteries. I was able to buy um, 80 uh, batteries, which I saved actually from going to a scrap heap. Um, they were advertised and somebody said, oh, I've got more of these. They'd already sent 80 to the scrap heap. Now, these are arranged in one long line, two long lines actually, one on top of each other. And uh, this is a great way of commissioning the batteries because we've simply uh, put uh, the connector bolt into each battery and then run a length of bare wire from one end to the other, just hooking it under tension, hooking it into the uh, into the bolts. Uh, when doing this, it's a good idea to put a plank on top so that you can't connect one side to the other. Um, and then at the end, the top lot are, are connected to the bottom lot. This then means, oh, here I've got a commercial uh, desulfator, not sure whether it works. Um, um, but the idea of this is so that we can feed um, the current um, instead of between this end and that end. Um, the idea is that if you connect the positive here and the negative up there, then all of these batteries get the same charge. So by connecting them, uh, the two layers at that end, um, we can connect a positive here and negative down there, and then there's an equal uh, uh, wire resistance going through all of the batteries. Now, for the moment, because these batteries have stood for a year, they were actually brand new in boxes, and uh, they weren't used, and apparently Yoasa won't take them back um, if they are more than six months old. So the implication is that these are likely to be sulfated.
Um, when they came, they were at a voltage of 12.8 volts. And overnight, I've put them on a Bedini charger. Now, there's a lot of controversy about Bedini chargers, and people love them with wheels. Well, um, here's a version with a wheel. And the idea of this um, is that, and I'm not at all convinced one needs the wheel, it basically just needs an oscillator. But basically, you've got this wheel, um, and this has four magnets. And as the magnets um, go past the coil, it generates pulses, which, let's start it going again. There it is, it will spin up in a minute. Um, it generates pulses which switch on a transistor to then allow the back EMF of the coil um, to be used in charging the batteries to high voltage and it's said to be good for desulfating the batteries. So that's great. Now I didn't use that on these battery banks here which I commissioned the other day. Um, I simply took these up to 14.2 volts with a charger um, in parallel um, and then let them stand. I've got, I didn't have enough connectors um, and so I couldn't actually um, c uh, connect all of these properly logically so I will be going through these rearranging them according to voltage and making sure the li lead lengths are balanced. Um, here we've got, I've just uh, um, dislodged the wire. Here we've got a motor controller and uh, these motor controllers are great. They um, uh, put a pulse, uh, they, they control uh, motors by feeding a full voltage po pulse into a, into a motor. So here we've got batteries at 12 volts um, and here we've got a 24 volt system and so what we're doing is to, let me put that wire into there, a little bit of a spark. There you are, you can see the spark. Um, let's put it in. It doesn't need to be in terribly securely, it will just sit there quite happily. Um, so I've set this onto the minimum, so that this is giving, you know, 2% pulses of 25 volts dead short. So it's quite high current um, into these batteries. And so, again, this should de de desulfate them. In the last, uh, oh, I was here, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, um, and so in the last six hours, uh, they've only gone, gone up 0 0.1 of a volt. Uh, whether or not I allow them to um, complete that process in that way, I don't know, but we'll see. Um, Organising connectors, um, I'm using the connectors from Henley Blocks, which are standard uh, mains uh, uh, connectors for power, and we're simply taking the um, middle screw out and drilling a hole so that that provides a fixing hole. Um, that's for the positive, and on the negative I'm using zinc-plated earth strips. So there's the progress since the other day. I hope that um, uh, our experience might help.